Well, good evening and welcome to the Good Friday service of Marin Bible Church. If you are new here, we welcome you and we thank you for being with us. My name is Pastor Jim. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. And tonight is a very um, special night for us as believers. It's a special night for our church and it's a special night, honestly, all over the world because today we are remembering the dark and difficult night of our Savior's suffering that led to his death. It's fitting that we meet at night, um, although there's no command in Scripture that you must have to meet at night, but it is fitting because Jesus is the culmination of Jesus' betrayal and his death and the entire situation begins at night as the disciples and Jesus gather together in an upper room and begin the process of laying out the new covenant. And Jesus will meet with all of his disciples, including the one who would ultimately betray him and the ones, the one that would deny him, and the ones that would flee when the shepherd was struck. So tonight is not a celebration, it is a remembrance. It is a chance for each of you here to remember the darkness that Jesus suffered for us. Jesus would be forsaken so that we would never have to be. And tonight, a lot of the theme of our service is about darkness. In fact, the entire service will end in darkness, the lights will go out and you will be instructed to simply leave in silence. And that's very symbolic for us because we want you to remember that this time is a time to remember the suffering that was done for us. And so tonight as we uh, listen to music being played, as we listen to the scriptures being read that recount the story of Jesus' suffering and crucifixion, as we sing together, some of the songs will have words on the screen and you'll be invited to sing along with us. As we do those things, we are meant to draw no attention to us whatsoever, but to draw attention to our Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you're here this evening and you are a follower of Jesus, we invite you to reflect on the suffering of Jesus. Because the suffering of Jesus will give us a measure of the depth of God's love for you. So I wanna begin with a word of prayer, and after we pray, Pastor David will come and speak. Let's pray. Father, tonight, it is necessary that your spirit come and be with us. And we know that your spirit is with us if we are gathered together as believers. But we are not able to conjure up our own emotions. We are not able to really capture the intensity and the depth of your suffering and the suffering of your son Jesus Christ without your spirit's help. Thank you for the word of God that has power inside of it. And as the word of God is read, I pray that it would go forth with power into our hearts and give us um, just a, a taste of what it must have been like for you to look around the table that evening and to know that what lay ahead of you would be the most difficult and dark day of the history of mankind. And yet you went and you said, your will, not mine. Thank you, Lord, for your son who was sent for us to be in our place so that we would not suffer in such a way. And may this give hope to all of us who may be suffering tonight. Each of us may be carrying a burden, a load, a heaviness, uh, something that is sad. But help us to see, Lord, that you have been much further than us. And because of the joy that was set before you, you endured the cross so that you might see the salvation of your children. So thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, who endured this suffering and died in our place. And may you help us remember that this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. It's an interesting thing to call today Good Friday. Uh, how can a day where the person that loves us the most and the person that you love the most, if you're a Christian, who was tortured and uh, spit at and mocked and ultimately killed, how can we call that good? I don't know that we would call that good if that happened to the person next to you or behind you or in front of you. Um, it's, a, it's, it's really a, a terrible, horrible thing that took place 2,000 years ago. And yet we call it Good Friday for 
a lot of good reasons. And the reality is that the crucifixion of Christ that took place 2,000 years ago is good, first of all, because this was part of, a, of the plan of God to save us. God is just, God is perfect, God is holy, and we know we're not. And he tells us we're not. If you don't know it, he tells you, you you're not and I'm not. And God is something that we call just or righteous. He's perfect. He can't look upon sin. He can't have a relationship with a sinner. Um, and because of that, it was necessary that he made a plan to save us, a plan to save sinners. And so it was actually planned in the Old Testament many years, hundreds of years before he came, it was prophesied. Uh, the crucifixion was prophesied in Psalm 22 and Psalm 16 and Isaiah 53 in great detail. But it's interesting that when Peter preached in Acts, in Acts chapter 4, he said this, he reminded the crowd that uh, they were the ones that had crucified Jesus, and he said, Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, we're doing whatever God's hand uh, desired and whatever God's plan had predestined. And this had to take place. And so Jesus, before he came, knew what awaited him. And that's an amazing thing. Um, I don't like going to the doctor very much, and I don't like going to the dentist very much. And I have to plan for it, and I have to prepare for it, and I have to pray for it. <laughs> but Jesus came and lived for 33 years knowing that ultimately he was gonna be killed, ultimately he was gonna be crucified, ultimately that his father would treat him as if he were you or me. Not as if he were him, perfect and righteous, but as if he were you or me. And that's an amazing thing. So that's the first thing we're reminded of, of why it's good is because it's good because when God makes plans, they're always good. And God planned, to save you and save me. But that could only happen through a righteous, a righteous person who would make atonement or be the substitute for us so that he would take the punishment for our sin. And that's the second thing that makes this good, uh, why we call it Good Friday, is that even though uh, Jesus was crucified, it was crucified so that you and I can be forgiven of all of our sins. What an amazing thing to have the record of Christ given to us in exchange for our imperfect record. A perfect record for an imperfect record. So that makes it tremendously good. And there's one verse I wanna share with you before I would invite you to take communion. It's from 2 Peter, or for, from 1 Peter chapter three, verse 18. And there's four amazing truths in just this one verse. Again, this is the apostle Peter. And Peter tells us that Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. And there's four incredible truths here. First, Christ suffered so that you and I will never have to suffer and be punished for our sins. Christ took that penalty. Christ took the just, righteous judgment of God on you and on me Christ took that upon himself in exchange for your sins. He took your sins upon himself, and then he gave us his righteousness. So it says the righteous for the unrighteous. That's Jesus in exchange for you, Jesus in exchange for me. It says he did it once. He never has to do this again. Once you trust in Christ as your Lord and Savior, that means all your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future forever. And he will never hold them against you because he already punished Jesus for your sins. Because Jesus took your sins upon himself and he gave you all his righteousness. And then it says that he might bring us to God. If you're a Christian here tonight, you're gonna be brought before the Father one day in heaven. And uh, if, if you were brought before him without Christ, you would be judged for your sin. But because of Christ, he brings you to God and he brings 
Uh, he gives you all of his righteousness and you come before the Father and I come before the Father completely righteous, completely pure, completely holy because Jesus has given us his righteousness in exchange for our sin. So that's why Good Friday is good. And not only Good Friday. The reality for the Christian is every day is good. Every day is good. And as a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul tells us that for those who love Christ, for those who are called according to his purpose, to those who love Jesus, all things work together for good. And then a few chapters later in Romans 11, Paul concludes with this incredible doxology. I think he breaks out in praise. Um, and he says, for from him and through him and to him are all thanks to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so if you're a Christian, every day is a good day because you're forgiven. Because you have the righteousness of Christ. Because he paid your penalty once and for all. It never has to be paid again. You don't have to pay for it. It's already been taken care of. When the check comes to you on judgment day, Jesus has already paid the bill. You look at it and go, oh, paid in full. It's a done deal. What an amazing God we have that he would forgive us. But again, it took an amazing sacrifice. And so we're here tonight to remember that sacrifice. And to mem remember specifically that, that that sacrificial lamb has a name, and his name is Jesus. And he's the King of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. And when he comes the next time, he's coming to reign. He's coming to rule forever. And believe me, you want to be on the right side of that rule. And the only way to be on that right side is through Jesus Christ. So I also want to read the first passage that we're going to look at tonight from Mark. And uh, let me go there here. This is from Mark chapter 15. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So in a second, um, I'm going to invite everyone here, if you've put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've confessed your sin to him, you've repented of your sin, and you've turned to him for the forgiveness of your sins, uh, that means that until Jesus returns, one of the things he told us to do was to be baptized. Uh, the symbol, uh, we have a few people getting baptized on Sunday. They're going to be up there in that high loft up there in the water. And when they go down into the water, that rep represents dying to self. It, re it represents dying to sin. And when you come out of the water, it re represents that new life, that new life in Christ. You're a new creation. And it represents the resurrection of your life. That you're a new creation in Christ. The old is gone, the new has come. But when we do communion, another ordinance that God gave, he gave two. He gave baptism. If you're a Christian, you need to be baptized. And if you're a Christian, you need to take communion when you gather together. That's why we do communion every, every week. We want to remember his, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and the fact that he's coming again. He, this is what we hang on to. This is why we can sleep at night. <laughs> this is why if we die, we can face the judgment. Because Jesus took our place and gave us his righteousness. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, I'm going to make sure I got this right. Uh, there's, there's communion elements here to my right, your left, and to my left, your right. I'm going to be over here. Tyron's going to be over here. And what we're going to do is if you could, uh, if you need to, go out the doors and come down these aisles in the back to the communion table, you'll take those, the cup and the bread, and then you'll go back to your seats through the middle aisle. I think I got that right. <laughs> Lynn's saying yes. Uh, Lynn carefully thought this through. Um, so that's the way we're going to do it. If you have any questions, if you don't know what's going on, uh, you can ask someone. But again, very simple. Uh, usually you have the elements given to you on Sundays, typically, but here you're coming forward. 
and uh, you'll take the, take the bread, take the cup back to your seat, and then you can take it, and then we're going to listen to a, a, a song that focuses our attention on what Jesus has done for us. So we're going to do that um, in just a second. And um, so I invite you to, to stand, and then, uh, again, go out this way, come in through the sides, and we're going to take communion. Thank you. 
Would you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for these elements that represent what you planned in eternity past. Jesus, thank you for coming and being the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Thank you for propitiating the wrath of God that we deserved, that you took the justice, the just requirements of the law you fulfilled so that you could give us your righteousness, and then you paid the penalty for our sin. And Holy Spirit, thank you that you made us alive spiritually, and you gave us the gift of faith to believe. I pray that this night would give great glory to you. I ask that as we think about these things, that like Mary did when she pondered the incarnation, she gave glory to you and she praised you. And I pray that as we give you praise now, that our hearts would be full of joy because it is indeed a good Friday. It's a great Friday because our sins are forgiven. And as far as the east is from the west, you will remember our sins no more because we have the imputed righteousness of Christ. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. Your 
And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, that the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came a third time, and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.
And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him and at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they lay, laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled.
And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again and began to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. And after a little while, the bystander again said to Peter, certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and he wept. Praise the Lord.
Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner from whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them saying, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered them, him to be crucified.
And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, ha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked to him, mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. <laughs> This lonely hill, what have I done? I don't remember, and no one knows just how I feel. And I know that my time is coming soon. So long, for such a long time since I've lived in peace and rest. Now I am here in my destination. Well, I guess things work out for the best, and I know. Cross and erase him 
Oh, they raised him up next to me. My time has come, and I'm slowly fading, but I deserve what I receive. Oh, Jesus, when you're in your kingdom, oh, could you please, please remember me? Well, he looked at me, still holding on, tears fall from his eyes. Then he says, I tell you the truth today, today. That my time is coming soon, and I know that my time is coming soon. Well, I know that paradise, the paradise is coming soon. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness all over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. A crown of thorns placed on his head. He knew that he would soon be dead. He said, did you forget me?
took from his head the thorny crown and wrapped him in a linen gown then laid him down to rest inside the tomb the holes in his hands his feet his side now in our hearts we know he died to save And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of council who was also looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid.
took us all to be able to personalize what I began the service with from 1 Peter 3.18. And this is the way I would pray this for myself. 1 Peter 3.18, I would say, Christ, thank you for suffering once for my sins. Thank you for being the righteous one that I could never be and for taking my unrighteousness and satisfying the wrath of God by paying my debt that you might bring me to God. Before we pray, um, we're going to hear one last song, and I'm going to ask that as you listen to this song, you reflect on what Jesus did for you personally on the cross. Just quietly listen and spend that time focusing on Jesus, and then I'm going to ask as soon as the song's over that you would just leave quietly, uh, maintain silence, and then come back and join us on Sunday, and that's going to be the time for loudness and celebration, okay? We are going to celebrate big time. But for now, just maintain the spirit that is here of just reflecting on what a wonderful Savior we have. Let's pray. Jesus, what an amazing thing that you would volunteer to be our Savior, that you would volunteer to suffer um, unspeakable suffering, more than anything we could ever imagine, and to be, to be forsaken by the Father with whom you've always had a perfect love relationship. And Father, it's amazing to think that you treated Jesus as if he were us. You poured out your wrath upon him. Jesus, thank you for going through that so that we can be made right with the Father. And so, Lord, as we reflect on the old rugged cross right now, we thank you. We, how, can we, how can we express our thanks? It's impossible. But, Lord, I hope that we can. I hope that we can at least be grateful and thankful and reflect on what an awesome lover you are to love us as you have and to love us unconditionally and to love us forever. So as we reflect on the cross and what you did for us, we ask that our hearts would be full of praise to you and that you would accept that as our love back to you for you first loving us. In Jesus' name, and everybody said. Thank you.